welcome to the New Rugged Order Podcast, exclusively on the Hard Knock Digital Culture Channel. Now give it up to your host people, MM2K. What's up people, what's up people, what's up people, it is your boy MM2K. I don't care what anybody says, I still think that's the hardest intro for a game. It makes you feel like that you're under attack. You're in the last of us. <laughs> you're scrambling for the last canned goods and you're M16. But shout out to everybody. This is your boy, MM2K. What's that? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's the hard, yeah, it's the hard. I remember um, a good friend of ours, shout out to King's Blood. Um, he's a content creator. He saw that intro and he said, man, you're really a fear monger. <laughs> he said, you trying to scare, trying to scare people like it's the last days or anything. Look, man, this is, this is hardcore digital culture, uh, hard knock digital culture. This is NRO podcast, the new rugged order. Um, the other voice that you hear in the back is our, is, is our co-host. We kidnapped him through him in a van. We, we grabbed him from SSC podcast, kidnapped him through him in a van. Our good friend, Daryl Smock Jr. Smock, how you doing today? Good brother. Awesome stuff, bro. Awesome stuff. Let me see if we can get we can get this this stuff working. There we go. All right. And he says I'm back for a new episode. That's what's up, man. Uh, we got a lot to talk about, bro. Um, some breaking news about Halo. We got Ron Slusher in the house. We got Cold Blood. Cold Blood, you late, man. Look, man. I some some stuff happened. I'm sorry, man. I, I apologize. Okay. I'm sorry, good brother, but I'm here now. I'm here to I'm here to dog on Phil. All right, um, but we got we got some big news. We got um, Halo. So breaking news about Halo. I had to fill Smock in because it's so breaking. Um, but we got that. We got we're going to talk about the silly debate Smock and I uh, between High Five Rush and Forspoken. And we're going to give our thoughts about Forspoken because we both been playing it. Um, and <laughs> would you would you believe that what we think about the game? Isn't what the stupid critics are saying? Oh my gosh, can you believe that? You might want to try things on your own. Um, then we're going to talk about uh, the developer conference with Xbox. We haven't had a show since that thing released. And uh, <laughs> lastly, there's a, there's a PC game that's that's going to be on sale for those of you that are PC gamers. Um, it might be a big deal for you, so we're going to tell you how to get it on sale. But before we get to that, I'm going to pass the mic over to my good friend Daryl Smock. Junior A Smock, can you let the good people know what you've been playing? And also, there's some news uh, about a game you was just telling me about. Not a racing, another racing game you was telling me about. Can you fill the people in after you tell us what you've been playing? <coughs> is it is it is it me? They might be talking about me. Who are they? Could it could it be me? Uh, yeah, because you hardly say anything, so I think it's it, it might it might be it might be me. But go ahead, brother. I think you're I think you're good. You sound good on my side. Oh, you you know what? It might be it might just be you. Uh, say something again, Daryl. Yeah, for some reason you're. But th that it's it's on my side. Hold on, let me see if, let me see if we can fix this. All right, for some reason you're not coming through. He says we can't hear smock. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna add you. Something weird has. Something weird has happened, man. All right. Oh, you know, you know what? Yeah, it was it was fine last week. Yeah, no, it's not you. It's something on my side. Let me do this. Let me. Um, I think what I need to do is I need to add. Um, let's do this. One second, y'all. Give me a second. I'm sorry. Give me a second. Audio, and then we're going to add. Um, 
Let's try adding in. What is it? Cable output A. All right, say something smart. Something, something. There we go. Now you're good. Okay, something weird. We both were coming in on one mic. Now you got to have your own separate mic channel. So now y'all should be able to hear. Oh, my mic sounds good too. Yeah, okay, sounds good. 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 Here we go. All right, brother. Sorry about that, y'all. We got it fixed. Thank y'all for letting us know in the chat. I'm glad you caught that because you know me. I don't be paying attention to the chat. We'd have went 30 minutes. <laughs> they wouldn't have heard you. Um, All right. But, check, but smart, check, go check. ahead, brother. Let the good people know what you've been playing and then about this, this game that's forthcoming. All right. Um, okay. Sorry. I was waiting to hear myself on a, on a, on a Twitch feed. But basically, um, I've been playing a, a whole lot of Forspoken. I've been playing a lot of that game. I've been playing Need for Speed Unbound and Gran Turismo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are the three games that a I've been playing. It's a lot of racing. I man, I've been um, heavy on racing lately. I've been mainly racing. Like besides Forspoken, spoken, I've mainly just been playing racing games. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, okay. That's what's up, man. That's what. I'm, yep. That's your stick, man. That's what you do. So ain't nothing wrong with that. We can't be mad at that. Yeah, man. Yep. Yeah, luckily, I, I didn't get the crew yet. I didn't buy the crew two again because I would be playing that one too. But it's only because of cross save feature. It's not coming. Yeah. Can't, I don't think you can get all my stuff back that I had on Stadia, that like sucks. on PlayStation. So I'm like, Ugh, I'm kind of turned off at this point. So I'll just wait until the crew just got announced earlier. Mm -hmm. It's not really breaking news, but for me it is because like we I know one thing is for sure. This is gonna be the best. This is gonna have the best post post launch support in, of any racing game any to me. Game. It's yeah. any racing game, the best post launch support for you know. So that's one thing for sure, and I'm gonna put in a whole bunch of hours in that one once it comes out. So, yeah. Now I was saying earlier before we went live, I said that that's dope that um that um crew two um is coming out because you know there was a lot of um hoopla about um, Ubisoft canceling a whole bunch of games. Yeah. But because you guys have, uh, but but again, you, you were telling me, they ain't no way in God's going to everything. <laughs> they canceled the crew too, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, so it, lights are still on at Ubisoft. It's, it's not completely grim and, you know, and, and then look, here's the thing though. The two games that they cut back, we don't even know what the hell they are because they never announced them. So they right. just, you know, so I mean, it's no big deal. Can I respond to Cold Blood real quick? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So Need for Speed Unbound isn't dead. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, the effects aren't nearly as bad as what people said. You could turn them off if you want to. Mm -hmm. Oh, you could turn off the effects if you don't like them. And you want to know how I know it's not dead? They're already coming out with their first update. Mm. So. No, mm. they're 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 gonna they're gonna start their their live service with their with the net with the update that's coming up. So yeah, the the Need for Speed is actually in a pretty good spot. They actually made some balancing changes because their Regera was super overpowered. Um, S plus like the really fast, the the highest tier class that you could get your cars in, and they they nerfed it down to make it more um beatable because once you basically it's like you would get that car. And basically, you will basically win any race that, that involves that car. It's just that good. It's like you can't beat it. <laughs> Unless Take the person just blood. a really bad driver. <laughs> Take that cold yeah, the game. Yeah, the game isn't dead at all. That's what's up, man. Um, Ron Slusher's in the house. So before we get started, uh, <laughs> he's a dead to me. I had to clarify that. <laughs> um... <laughs> Before we get started, started. Oh, uh, and I almost forgot the music. We always look, always play the music. I, I always like bumping the jams. Um, we, Ron Slusher said to me, so maybe you can put some two cents in this too, uh, um, Smart. He said, look, man, I'm trusting your unbiased input. I'm, I'm about to get Forspoken. You know, I'm about to drop 70 on Forspoken. Now, he doesn't have to drop 70 on Forspoken because I'm about to tell him how he can get it for cheap. Because Cold Blood Sensei can testify to that. But even if he had to drop 70 on it, Smock, do you think it's, the game is worth 70 to you? 
Um, if you want to get the the deluxe edition, it's just like extra stuff. You know, extra stuff they have for crafting, or they give you like extra materials and stuff like that. Um, is it worth seventy? Yeah, it's the first big game. It's the first big game that came out this year. Um, I agree. And the game is fluid. The game is fluid. The game is beautiful. Honestly, the game looks really good. It's like um, on track. I like actually. I like the intro. The intro music don't doesn't really bother me. Like I'm, I don't know, I don't know. It just, it's, it's not as bad. It's not that bad. Like what people are saying, you no. feel me? You can't like, when it comes to games, you can't just go based off of what other people mm-hmm. say. You gotta experience it for yourself. You feel me? Yeah, and play the game for yourself. Once you get into the world, and once you start, once you get into the combat and everything, and you start fighting bosses, and you start getting into building your character into the moves that she has and stuff like that. It's not that is the game ain't is not that bad, bro. Trust me. So I think it's I think it's worth it. It's not yeah, it's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. What am I saying? It's not bad at all. <laughs> it's um <laughs> the game the, the game I've been having fun, bro. I've been I've been wanting like a, you know a game is good when you're at work and you, the main thing that's on your mind is wanting to get off work to go play some more of that game. You feel exactly. me? Like that's how you know. That's how you know. Me and my wife have gotten into many arguments this weekend because of Forspoken, you know. Oh, he's talking about Need for Speed. He's talking about the Need for Speed soundtrack. Uh-oh. Oh, um, Need for Speed doesn't have a bad soundtrack. They just put in more. They just put in more of a light on the UK rap, on the UK, you know, on right. their drill beats and the mm-hmm. um and stuff like that. It doesn't. I like it. I've always liked UK rap though. They they got some bars and a plus like their accent. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people are complaining that like other genres of music. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, it's in. yeah, I mean, pretty soon they might have some expansions or something like that. Who knows? Yeah, you, know, you just, can't. You, everything can be all American all the time. <laughs> just, you know, I mean, with any game, man, shoot, just turn off the music and put on your Spotify. <laughs> really yeah, that's what he nothing. said. Yeah. yeah, that's what he said. He does. He, he has to play his own music. Mm-hmm. I don't have Spotify, so I can't do that. I have to put in a USB stick and uh, um, play my own and play my own stuff. But my my question is, I'm new to PS5, uh-huh. so I don't really know if because I like to I like to use the videos on my PlayStation uh-huh. and export them that way to YouTube and then download them from YouTube. If I'm playing my own music. If I'm playing my own music, is that gonna show up in my recorded gameplay, or is it not gonna, or is it not gonna um, play? I don't think show that music. Up. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. I don't, I don't think so, but I don't know because what I do is I use a um, yeah, I don't use a direct stream. I have a, a capture card, so I, I feed my PlayStation Five into my capture card PC, and I record that way. You know what I'm saying? And that gives me a lot more right. choices to what music I want to play and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's a, that's a good that's a good ass question. We're gonna, we're gonna have to ask somebody and find out. I don't think so though. I think what it captures is um, the, the game audio and maybe your your voice, but I don't think it captures right. music. But what I will have to okay. test that out. That's a good question, man. Um, yeah. Ron Snow, See, Ron I like Sl- the demo, yeah. but, but the negative attention got me questioning it. Mm. Can I say something Is about it, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I, I, I want to say, Ron. Here, here's my thing, bro. Now, Cold Blood Sensei, he gonna have a seizure over this. He ain't gonna like this. Um, I, I learned a while ago that the modern day reviewer cannot be trusted. There are a bunch of college dropouts or whatever that know how to put a bunch of fancy words together that maybe play some games here and there. Most of them, when you shake them down and get their gamer score, they ain't playing no games. Um, but they're reviewing them. And I learned out with Quantum Break. I think that was the name of the Xbox game. Everybody was dogging it. It's only 720p and all this other stuff. And when I got a hold of it, I thought it was cool. I enjoyed it. I remember when I got my, my One X and, um, you know, they upgraded the graphics and stuff like that or the resolution. I thought it was cool. And I said, I'm never listening to an aggregate score of gamers again. If I'm on the fence about a game because maybe I'm running short on money, or I don't know if I really want to play it, and I go listen to a review, I'm going to someone that thinks like me. Now, a reviewer that thinks like me 
in a lot of ways, not all the way, but in a lot of ways, is Destructoid. I like going to Destructoid and seeing what they're saying about a game that I might be on the fence about. But at the end of the day, bro, you, you can't nobody bite your sandwich for you and tell you if you're going to like it. <laughs> you, you, you see exactly. what I'm saying? If you like the demo, usually the game is better than the demo. So if you like the demo, then, you know, I, I would say it's safe to go get the game. Now, I'm going to show you real quick, and we're going to get right into it. Because I want to I get Smock's thoughts on all this stuff. But I'm going to show y'all real quick on how to get um, uh, um, um, Forspoken for less than $70. All right. Like a 15% discount. All right. So this is how you do it. Let me take you to this site. This site is called Slick Deals. Slickdeals.net. I'm telling you, if you're not down with this site, get down with it now. It, it's it, everything from video games. Like, look right here. You can go to Amazon. Really, right now, you go to Amazon and get it. I, I didn't even realize that. You can get it. Well, uh, it says it expired. But for a while on Amazon, they had a sale where the game was 60 instead of 70 mm -hmm. um, But here's another thing that you can do. It's, it takes a couple of steps. Slick Deals often runs promotions with other video game sites. So what you can do, like they're running a promotion with this key site called King Kinguin. So if you go to Kinguin and buy, let's just say, $75 worth of um, X, uh, uh, PlayStation points, because that's how much it's going to cost with tax. It's going to be like $75. You can put in Slick Deals 15, all one word, Slick Deals 15 in the promo code, and you'll only have to pay $65 for it. So you save yourself 10 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's including tax. Um, and then you can go ahead and buy the game. If you want more PlayStation points, you know, because it's 15% off. That's why Slick Deals 15. You can go and use Slick Deals 15 on a $100 PlayStation card and only pay like $83 for it. You know what I'm saying? $85 right. for it. So... Right. I highly suggest that that's what you do. Go to Kinguin, because they got the promotion with Slick Deals, in the promo code, put Slick Deals 15, I'm gonna put it in the chat. It's Slick Deals 15, and get that 15% off. Cold Blood Sensei could attest to it because he didn't believe me at first. He was like, this ain't, this ain't gonna work, and he tried it, and it worked for him. So, so get that a shot. All right, now, with that said, let's get into the, well, no, before we get into the news, we got some hot topic stuff to talk about. All right, so first and foremost, uh, Smock, I know you didn't hear much about this. I'm gonna break this down real quick, try to and get your thoughts on it. Um, So Halo is Xbox's flagship franchise. Are you a fan of Halo, Smock? Yeah, I was. The first, the first three Halos, I really liked it. The okay. first three. Yeah. I think that was when Bungie. That was when Bungie yeah, was over Bungie, at Halo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're a huge fan of Destiny. If people did Destiny yeah. too, so you know, of course, that, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and my man knows his quality. Well, it appears that Halo, under three four three, has been going through some serious mismanagement, and now everything is starting to surface because Jason Schreier. The, the the world renowned investigative reporter for all things gaming, he's un, he's unearthed some things, and so the things that he's unearthed is that three four three management was being poorly managed. No, there was like really no sufficient oversight, and what's happening is all the stuff that was being promised uh, via the um, uh, what do you call it? All the stuff that was being promised via multiplayer is is, is is wiped off the slate. All the stuff that was being promised via um, single player is being wiped off the slate completely because they're starting from scratch. Um, and it says, major new report from Jason Schreier, studio franchise is essentially all but starting from scratch and at least 95 people from Halo, been, um, from 343 been let go. Halo was switching to Unreal Engine with a new game Codename to talk to us on Bloomberg.com. But here's the kicker, and then I'm going to get your thoughts on this, um, Smock. This is an excerpt from what Jason Schreier had wrote in that article. He says, 
Developers were making prototypes in the Unreal Engine and pitching ideas for new Halo games rather than working on new missions for Halo Infinite. Many of those developers were laid off this month and the company isn't actively working on new story content that people say. So it sounds like they laid them off after the day, but the damage has already been done. So my question yeah. to you, Smart, is a lot of us that have PlayStations in, in, opposed to Xboxes have come to the foregone conclusion that Xbox cannot put out any stellar games and they can't do it because they're not managed right. Do you agree with that sentiment and do you think this is another example of that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's not as hard for me to disagree when stuff like this is coming out. Yeah. Like, uh, they just gotta, I don't know what's going on over there, man. I'm worried about them. It sucks that, that, Instead of working on the games that they do have, they're just trying to spend more money and yeah. just develop a whole new game and just scratch it. Like, you know, that's why a lot of, like, I know EA isn't specific to one console, but that's what happened with Need for Speed Heat. That game flopped, I guess. They only put on one, they put on one update, and then they just, everybody got laid off. Everybody got laid <laughs> off, just like this. Everybody got laid off, and now it was no no new game. I mean, no new, um, no new updates. And it's just sad because multiplayer halo multiplayer is, is still going on you know so it's like man if, if you're xbox over there if you're over on that side of things you gotta man i don't know i would be if i was a fan of that game I, that wouldn't i wouldn't take take kindly to just that that approach is is never a, a, a good approach yeah i mean i'm just i i, I don't know man and people may, I mean, people are going to say, well, Smock and M2K, you're just hating on Xbox. So do you, you, I mean, I want them around because I want PlayStation to be more competitive, right? I mean, would you agree? I, I want them to be competitive. And if they, if they don't have any competition, then their games might get weaker. But would you agree to that? Or how do you feel about that? I don't, I don't think that games are going to get weaker. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Let's be honest. Like, you know, the Wolverine game, we know that game's not yeah. about to flop. You feel me? Yeah. The the new Spider-Man game that's coming out, that's not about to flop, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, but we, we do need we do need Microsoft around so they could um, keep providing, you know, Sony with some competition. Some competition. You feel me? Exactly. <laughs> some competition. He said, you know? he said, no, he said, hold on, pause that, dog. Because uh, Wolverine's going to be hard. And, and Spider-Man, yeah. Yeah. yeah, true that. And then they, and, and Sony has 26 games in the pipeline. But, told but I about. think, I know we didn't talk about it yet, but uh -huh. for a first spoken topic, uh -huh. I think people are trying to really drive that to be Sony's bad game. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh yeah, Sony, they released this game. This game wasn't good. Mm -hmm. When it, when it, in actuality, is way better than people are giving it credit for. Exactly. Like, it's, man, flashbacks, flashbacks, man. <laughs> Days gone. Yeah. Uh, you know, like people, I, I, I chalk it up to people being mad because Sony's games are so great that they Thank want you. them for only $14 a month. But Sony's like, no. Like, okay, so I'm, I'm deviating all over our, our notes today. So, you know, we got that silly debate about Hi Fi Rush versus Forspoken, which is silly on Sony. What is Hi Fi Rush? What is that? Hi-Fi Rush, and, and, and I'm glad you said that, that way. Hi-Fi Rush, okay, so there was a developer's conference that Xbox had, and they showed five games. They showed Minecraft Legends, uh, Forza, um, Redfall, um, uh, what else? Oh, what else did they show? And, and they showed some other game, and then they showed Hi-Fi Rush, right? And Hi-Fi Rush is a game made by the developers that did Evil Within. I don't know if you remember those mm. Evil Within horror games. And mm. it's like this double-A, cell-shaded or cartoony type of music um, or, or rhythm game. But, I mean, it has combat stuff in it. And don't get me wrong, it looks cool, but it's a rhythm game. So it's not right. really... Pe people, it's, it's, it's not going to have the effect of a God of War. It's niche. Yeah, it's yeah. niche. Yeah, I mean, it's getting a lot of accolades. It's doing pretty good on Steam, but that doesn't 
that's not the tell-all be-all because PC gamers are different. Um, but it's doing well right now and it's getting accolades. But a lot of us looked at that game and said, okay, I mean, that's a cool addition, but it's a six-hour game and you're going to forget about it. Meanwhile, Halo is still messed up. Gears mm -hmm. is forgettable. All you got mm -hmm. is Forza. You know, like, and you have, and, it, we, and Starfield keeps getting pushed back. Even during that, the, the, the sad thing about that is that Redfall, which was their only AAA game outside of, well, AAA banger. Forza is a racing game, and nothing against racing games, but they don't, they're not system sellers. Redfall was the only AAA action game that they showed, and nobody's talking about that because it didn't look good when they showed it. They showed more of it that didn't look too great. So, but yeah, that's what High Fire Rush is. Let me see if I can find it on the screen. I'm gonna find it. Like a little trailer or something? Yeah, like a little trailer for High Fire Rush. I know I can find it somewhere. I, I, I actually see one of my, um, somebody that I'm subscribed to on YouTube, he's playing High Fire Rush right now on Twitch. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it's people that are playing it they are liking it. It is getting um, accolades, but it's like is so it? It's a it's an Xbox exclusive. It's an Xbox exclusive. It's made by one of mm. their their studios. Um, that yeah, and you can get it. You can get it from Game Pass. And I think right now, if you like get Game Pass Ultimate, you can play it in the cloud. I'm gonna play it right here. Mm. You can you can play it in the cloud. It's a game that you can play in the cloud. Here it goes right here. We're playing it on the screen. So it's a rhythm like action game. And don't get me wrong, I mean, visually it looks good, but I mean, when we're talking about Halo not looking good, Starfield getting pushed back, Redfall, not, not impressive at all. This ain't the game to do it. Yeah. So, and what people are doing is, <coughs> They're comparing this game to Forspoken. They're like, Forspoken is trash and this and that because this is selling better than Forspoken on Steam. And that's silly. And I'm, I'm going to illustrate why, but I, I want you to... Bro, I'll take Forspoken over this any day of the week. I'm not going to lie. Come on, it's not. It's not, <laughs> I, I, it's not even me. It's like, this isn't my type of game. This isn't yeah. this game. Like, this... Rhythm, I'm not, I don't like rhythm games. Rhythm games are never really for me. Like I've, like on, when I was playing Stadia, I played, there was this one game that you had to like follow the beat. Yeah. And you know, and you know, the better you do that, the better you, you could complete challenges and stuff exactly. like that. But like those type of games aren't really my, my type of games. I like story driven games. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm a, I'm a Sony guy, you feel me? I like story driven games. And Sony, I mean, and yeah, Sony does a really good job at that. Even for Spoken, it's really good. I like the story so far. Like the story's not even bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think what it was is that, um, again, we're, 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 the media can take an opportunity to trounce on S Sony. They'll do that because um, they want, they want for Spoken, and they want God of War, and they want um, Horizon. They want those games in a subscription service for only ten or fourteen dollars a month. Man, you know they would saying? take Xbox. Xbox players would take Gran Turismo over Forza if they had it. Oh, uh, tell me about. It. I guarantee you. I guarantee you they would. Yeah. There's nothing like there's like Forza ain't got nothing on Gran Turismo. Like I don't know if I said it last week. Mm. Forza would never would has never partnered with any life manufactured to the point mm -hmm. where their players get to become real life drivers, race car drivers. They've never done anything like that. So to even have that chance, the, the Xbox would take Gran Turismo. Chance. Um, I, I will give Forza credit. Some of its graphical detail is, is, is good and impressive and all the other stuff, but... As it should be. Forza's, Forza's <laughs> but, but Gran Turismo is the more played game. I, I know there was these battles over these numbers, but um, Gran Turismo, GT Sport, and then Gran Turismo 7 um, accounted for 10.7 million sales. Not clicks, sales. And the only mm -hmm. details that we have is that um, Forza had 20 million clicks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
and I think yeah. um, GT Sport had 17 million or something. But when we're talking about sale, like here's what people don't understand when it comes to Game Pass. And this is why the whole Game Pass effect is bad and why Sony's smart and not taking advantage of it. I've talked to so many people once Hi-Fi Rush came out and they said, that looks cool. I'm going to play it. I'm going to pay my dollar to play it. And then I'm canceling my subscription. Because there's nothing else. Why, why would I keep it? So what happens is you don't need a the, dollar. All, all you need is if you never had a or you open up another account. It, can, it, it doesn't matter if you don't play um, Xbox. You know, you could care less about, oh, my points are on this other account. You could just open up any Hotmail account, start a new account and then subscribe for Game Pass for the first time. And you'll get a month for like a dollar. Some promotions, yeah. if, if you get a Pop Tart, <laughs> if you find some right. like special can of Mountain Dew, you might get three bucks for a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and Xbox thinks that that is a winning formula when all gamers are going to do is they're not going to follow the subscribe to it and forget about it model. Gamers are very finicky about where they're spending their money if they don't like something. So if they only want to try one game on your service and nothing else entertains them, then they're going to cancel the subscription. So what ended up happening is you essentially don't have a subscription model for most of the consumers. You've just basically just sold them the game for a dollar. You know what I'm saying? It's not a subscription service. You've just heavily discounted the game for a dollar. So um, it's... It's, I think it's just a bad state of affairs when you think about Xbox, where they're at, and them even trying to compare themselves to Sony, and, f and even for Spoken. Look, Hi-Fi Rush Smart, it's like, it's Metacritic is like 89 or something like that. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's half the price of For Spoken, um, and yeah, and it's getting all this critically acclaimed. Of course you would expect a game like that on Steam to sell more because Steam is perfect. And they ought to pay nothing for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Steam is a perfect place for that game. But where the real money is made for these games is going to be the consoles. And if I'm only paying a dollar to access it and canceling Game Pass, but I'm paying 70 a pop for Forspoken, and Forspoken went on pre-order. And another thing, too, is Forspoken been in pre-order since December. So even though What's the Call is doing better this week, that doesn't count all the sales that Forspoken got during pre-order. And when yep. you look at all the estimates, even on Steam alone, there's more players that have played Forspoken, and there's more people that are being registered as having Forspoken. So it doesn't even... It's a silly comparison. Game Pass kills sales when it comes to this. That's why they said it's only going to be 50% of the revenue and they're trying to move on from Game Pass. So that's my rant. It's just stupid to me. But if people like this game, it's fine. I mean, what do, what do you think? Why, why, in your opinion, why do you think people are trying to compare Hi-Fi Rush to Forspoken? Ooh, they need a W. They need a, they, They're trying to take all the W's that they can get, <laughs> you know. So they're trying to use Force Spoken because it has a bad Metacritic, to, you know, um, Hi-Fi Rush that has a good Metacritic and it's so cheap, you know. So mm -hmm. they're trying to they're trying to use that as the W. That's all it is. Yeah. They're just trying to get a W somewhere against Sony because they can't get it in racing. They ain't got no story driven games, you know. Yeah. So they got They got to get a something. They gotta get it somewhere. Yep. I, I totally agree. Um I, I and this Lulu Chang Maservi, she's a um, I have her up on the screen right now. She's like some type of exec over at Activision Blizzard. She's a big proponent on the Activision Blizzard deal going through. And she sent a letter to the FT or a, a tweet to the FTC talking about here's an example of why. We need to. We need you to pass this Activision deal, so Xbox can compete. And she puts on the Last of Us TV show, and it's like, no, this is a perfect example of Sony putting time and effort in managing all of their products 
where you look at the Halo show and it's not even getting out of claim. Because Microsoft I forgot they even had a show. Exactly. I forgot, like, I forgot they had a show. Exactly. I, I heard about it. I heard about a Halo show. And I, and I, it should be it's out already. Yeah, it's, 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 out, it's out already. already. Yeah. And it did numbers God, because I forgot a lot all of it, about it. A lot of the Xbox people, you know, wanted to help. Wait, what what service is it on? It's on is it Paramount like on Peacock? Plus. Paramount. See, nobody's getting that though. Yeah. Nobody's it, it, nobody's about to get Paramount Plus. <laughs> It did number. It's not getting the acclaim though. See, this is doing numbers and it's getting the acclaim. But yeah. it did numbers on Paramount Plus because all the, you know, all the Xbox or this Halo nerds went to go watch it. Right. But they complained a lot about it. They didn't. They they watched it, but they didn't like it because they didn't like the adaptation of it. Um, to where this every show, more and more people are watching it. So, to me, this is just an example of how Microsoft has golden opportunities in their hands already they mismanage mm -hmm. them you know um like sony is really just whooping microsoft's ass with four studios santa monica yeah you know what i'm saying santa monica who else uh naughty dog naughty dog yep yeah. um, um what's this the, 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 uh, spider-man studio what, what's that what's the, it was um insomniac, insomniac. yep yeah Insomniac and there's one other. The ones that did, um, I, I can't remember. There's, there's, they're they're yeah. working their ass with four studios. You have more studios than Sony now, including Bethesda. Oh, uh, now they got Bungie. Oh, yeah. And then oh, Sony, Sony has, has Bungie. Bungie. Sony has Bungie. Yeah. But Bungie's still, you know, going multi for the mm -hmm. time being. And when, um, when Life All drops, when I remember, remember last time when I told you when um, Witch Queen, what 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 happened and what I said it happened happened. Yeah. That was like the number one stream game when it came out. Yep. Same thing is gonna happen. Same thing is gonna happen on Lightfall. It's gonna be the number one. It's gonna be the most streamed game on a, on the first day. Like they're gonna hit over a million active players again. And guess who's gonna take all the credit for that now? It's gonna be Bungie and Sony. That's gonna be another W over Microsoft because you know it's. That game, that get Sony, Halo ain't touching Destiny 2. Uh, yeah, Tony, Sony, um, Halo isn't touching that game, no. and that that's about to be that's about to be something else that Sony gets to brag about. You know, <laughs> so it's man, they not Microsoft is it, they could probably get this one W over for spoken with their little weird little comparison thingy or whatever, <laughs> but that's all they get in. That's all they're getting. Sony they're is that. taking no losses. Sony's taking no real losses right now. I don't think they're even going to get that. You know why? Because when NPD comes um, and shows the January numbers, I think you're going to see, because NPD does, goes by dollars. You're going to see mm -hmm. that Forspoken, the game that they've clowned, made more dollars than uh, High Five Rush. And that's what matters. It's not the clicks oh. are supposed to represent money. So when they talk about these many people downloading and these many people click, that's supposed to represent money. When you have a high number of clicks, but it doesn't represent money because people are canceling their Game Pass subscription and Forspoken, the horribly rated Metacritic game, pulls in more money, then what do you have to say? All right. Nothing. I got a question. Uh-huh. Is that character Forspoken, is she a real person? Ah uh, yeah, she's a real person. I promise. She's, I yeah, promise you, real. she looks. She 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 looks real, bro. <laughs> yeah, she, no, she's a real person. She was on um the Charlie's Angel reboot. She's in a bunch of stuff. Oh, she is. Yeah, she's in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Mm. No, she's a she's a British actress. You would you couldn't tell. All these damn. Oh, British. she has a British. She's British. She's That's British, crazy. Yeah. Dang, All these damn yeah, British yeah. actresses and actors doing these American voices. Yeah, she's British. Did them perfect too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the, that's hey, the yeah. way. Uh, so that's crazy. Cold Blood says they got a crazy message up here. So he says, uh, Tim Dog spend more time on Twitter capping and making spreadsheets for High Five Rush than actually playing the game Laugh Out Loud. Yeah, that was comical. Right. And shout out, hey, Tim, if you're listening, I know you're listening, bro. If you're listening, I love you, Tim. But I got to get you, bro. I tried to ping Tim earlier. I said, come on out. Come on out and play. <laughs> and Tim was nowhere to be found, Cold Blood. He ain't, he, they, they only want this battle. And I said, wasn't it just like a 
few moments ago, y'all were clapping like baby seals, talking about PlayStation VR 2 failed and not end up being a rumor. Uh, y'all were saying that Forspoken was trash, but then now we're looking at the sales on Steam and it's still collectively so making more money than what's it called on Steam. You know what I mean? And that's what it's all about, the money. Uh, and y'all were screaming Hi-Fi Rush and Age of Empires. But now we find out that your flagship title is in the gutter. That would yeah. never, never happen at Sony. Never. You just reminded me about something, too. What's that? Just, um, this is another W for, for play for Sony. Yep. Um, Grand Turismo fans are about to go crazy because PSVR 2, mm -hmm. you can play all of Gran Turismo 7 in VR. That's crazy. All of it. You can play online. You can play That's online sick. in VR. You could do you could do single play. The only thing you can do is um split screen in VR. That's uh, the only thing. But everything else is in, you, will be in VR. That's another W because ever since ever since that racing game that was beautiful that got canceled after a while. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of that game. And everybody's going crazy because of how good it looks. And it, and it was in VR. They've been looking for that thing to fill to fill that gap, and Grizzly Seven is about to do that. Yeah. Dang, I forgot the name of that game. But yeah, yeah, Grizzly Seven is about to be in full VR with with PSVR too. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Is out here trying to fight the good fight. He's putting out all these. I mean, let's look at. Okay, so this is what this is what Xbox has to showcase. Let me let me put let me put Tim's tweet up here. This this is this is comical to me, and I, I wouldn't even put this up here. This is, like this is getting embarrassing. So, Tim, my, my good friend Tim, he says, Persona Five October. This is stuff coming to Game Pass. So he, and this ain't even all current stuff. This is stuff that I guess since October. Pentiment. <laughs> uh, high on life, with the abusive co-writer. That you know that now he's not going to be part of the show anymore. Monster Rise, Monster Hunter Rise, Hi-Fi Rush, Hot Wheels Unleash, Atomic Heart, which Atomic Heart is going to be dope. That's a good get for Game Pass, but it's going to be everywhere else. Uh, Wulong, Ghostwire. That Tokyo. game is coming out. Uh, no, 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 not, not, not the, uh, not the one we're thinking about. There's another one. Oh, okay. Yeah, not okay, that. I'm about to say. Yep. <laughs> uh, Minecraft Legends and Redfall. I mean, this, yeah, okay. It's cool that this is in Game Pass. But this is this is like old country buffet. People want Ruth Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Where's the Ruth Chris Steakhouse in this? Right. Redfall. Redfall did not. I mean, when you get a chance, Mark, please look at that that developers conference, and you'll you'll probably throw up. Don't eat. Don't eat first. You'll throw up, <laughs> uh, and you'll see Redfall, and you'll be like, that, that looks like trash. And that's supposed to be their next big AAA game. It's Redfall. It looks, it looks, it looks trash. But I, I'm just gonna say this: a Smock put out something, and I want to get his thoughts on this. Smock put out something that I think was, was just hit right on home. He said that Sony um, is doing great with the story-driven games and stuff like that, and now they got Bungie. And you know who Bungie is the masters of? Who who has the best, um, the the most played uh, MMO RPG out there? It's Destiny. Oh, right? it's probably Destiny. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's like yeah. it's Destiny MMO RPG. Um, if you think this is the genius of Sony, just in the PlayStation Two era, which wasn't that long ago, this wasn't what they were known for. Sony was known for just having the biggest uh, multiplats or second party they have a heavy big second party deals they have this if you wanted to play Final Fantasy if you wanted to play Grand Theft Auto the, you know that's where you had to go that's what Sony was known for then Xbox even the playing field and they got those games too and what did they start doing smart <coughs> Xbox started hitting <laughs> you with the western developed story driven games like a uh, Oblivion and um uh, mm -hmm. Like Oblivion and, and Mass Effect and, and Jade Empire, right? So what does Sony yep. do? Sony then develops their own. 
and they do it better than Microsoft. So now they got the story-driven Western develop thing that Microsoft used to master. They took that from Microsoft and, and made it even better. And now Microsoft, all they had was, well, we got the better multiplats. We got the we got the better shooters, and we got the better multiplats. We uh, no, we got the better multiplayer games, and we got the better shooters. What's bigger than what's a bigger shooter slash multi multiplayer game than Destiny? And guess who owns it now? Yep. PlayStation. They just pulled the rug from under Microsoft, and this regime is so backwards they can't, they can't even see it. So Xbox gamers, y'all better start demanding more, man. Y'all better start demanding more. Because y'all, I don't, I, pretty soon, they're going to take cloud from you, too. Oh, believe you me, there's some stuff happening in the background. They're going to take cloud, from, and you're not, and you're not going to have a leg up anywhere. So, those are just my, my, my random thoughts. Um, if I, the best thing that I think, um, I can do is, Get in contact with the people from from DC, mm -hmm. and yeah. start and, yeah. and start. Yes. So then it'll be DC yes. Universe. Then it'll really yes. be DC Universe versus yes. versus Sony and Disney. Marvel. Well, yeah. yeah, Marvel. Yeah, yeah. That's I, the best I, thing that they can do. I totally agree. I totally agree. You got you got to you got to rehash some identity some, somewhere because you have none. Yeah. All, all your, your because, identity is just cheap. Yeah, because with that they'll have Mortal Kombat. Exactly. And Mortal Kombat is a is a is a great fighting game, yep. you know. So that's probably the best move Microsoft can make. They probably won't ever do it. They probably will, they probably will try, but I don't know if that deal will actually go through if they can afford DC. But yeah, that's probably the best move that they can make. Yep, no, I totally agree. Uh, Cold Blood, for some reason, Cold Blood is not letting me put your comments, your other comments on. Mm -hmm. it. But it says Age of Empires. Sorry, but you're a clown if you play that one roll and celebrate it as a W. I'm done wasting my time with Destiny. I want Bungie to make a new IP with less That's the one run. thing mm -hmm. one thing that I can't agree with that yeah. is if you're a new player trying to get into Destiny, it's oh, a lot. Yeah. Oh, but Destiny, they have been working on making it easier for new players to get into the game. Mm -hmm. So I don't, now I believe it should be better for newer players to get into the game, it's still a grind because that's what that's what that's what the game is all about. Yeah. But um, they made it they, they made it easier for players. But it, I could I could totally see where it I'm coming sure. from with that statement. Yeah. So um, I think our final verdict is: um, Would you say that for, for for spoken before we go into the news news? Um, the, the debate against Forspoken is silly. Um, yeah, it is. It, 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 we're talking AAA development. Even, even this AAA development, which I, I think it's good, but okay. You know what? Good. You know what? You know what? Sorry. I, no, I, sorry, ahead, I keep cutting you off, man. No, go ahead, man. No, <laughs> but, we got to have that ever plug. Yeah, go ahead, brother. You know what the best part about Forspoken is? Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to comment on the banter you know because they don't like the dialogue yeah or they're trying to comment on the faces because the emotion i seen somewhere they said oh if you see the faces and the emotions from the from the people in the game but it's like the one thing that they can't say is the game doesn't play well yeah. because you know last year when all these triple a games was coming out a lot of them had a lot of problems on launch day yeah. this game didn't have no problems the game yeah. runs smooth there's no bugs there's mm -hmm. nothing the game is so smooth yeah. and it looks so free the game looks so freaking good like the yeah. the art style for a lot of the monsters and everything that like that little cute thing and then when turner has like <laughs> all freaking teeth yeah. bro that's crazy that's crazy yep. Yep. <laughs> that like i like the art style i like the art direction that they take in the oh, game yeah. it just looks good i like it man like real mystical yeah yeah, it does yeah. Me, like it gives me Jade Empire vibes, that old OG mm -hmm. Xbox game. Um, yeah, that's why I like it. Yeah, man. Um, no, man, cut me off at any given time. They tired of hearing my damn mouth, um, <laughs> bruh. I just look, I, I, and I I wouldn't even entertain this, but if it wasn't like a whole bunch of falseness in it that was misleading people. When you look at Steam, where Hi-Fi Rush is doing 
hell of a job on Steam. All right, we'll give them credit. I think it's top nine sellers, you know. Um, even though it's doing that well, they're still forespoken for the time that it's been on sale has more copies out. It does. It just does. It has more copies out. So okay. unless Hi-Fi Rush doubles the sales, it's not bringing in more money. And don't go and give me that, oh, oh well, you know, because Forspoken is AAA, uh, this, you know, it costs way more money. Well, we don't know that. Also, Forspoken, I mean, tr uh, Hi-Fi Rush took four years to develop. Oh, dang. It took four years to develop. So we don't know how much money went into that. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't second, even look like it should cost that much money. No, it should. It, yeah, it don't look like it should. It don't look like it should have taken that long. The real question, y'all, is how Hi-Fi does in NPD overall when you combine the console activity and the uh, PC activity. And don't give me that crap while it was in Game Pass because we already know that every Xbox console owner does not have Game Pass. Game mm -hmm. Pass may be at 30 million. How many Xboxes are out there? Uh, if you combine the Xbox One in this generation, maybe 70 million. So if you only got 30 million Xboxes out there, I mean, a Game Pass subscriptions out there, but you got 70 million consoles, between this generation and last, there's no excuse. None. So they better they if they don't if they don't be forespoken in, in, in NPD, then we need to shut it down. We need to shut mm -hmm. up the silly stuff, we need to shut it down. So um all right. That's it for for our, our, our table talk. Um now let's get into the news news. Um that developers conference. Let me put that up there on the screen. I really urge you, if you get a chance, Smock, to check this out because it's comical. This is this was their answer to um, a lot of the things that uh, people like uh, King Thrash had put out there. He said, "Look, Microsoft laid off ten thousand people. The APK deal is going bad. Starfield is rumored to be delayed again. Halo has no ray tracing, and then the, all the problems that we heard about it. Xbox price hike in Japan um, and then elsewhere." Massive dip in Xbox sales and Game Pass growth stunning. You know what I mean? Um, this was supposed to be the answer for all that. And it, it just it fell flat to a lot of people. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, what? Again, I think we asked this question last week. But for those that may have missed it, because I, I forget what your response was. What do you think Xbox needs to do because they have to at least compete with Sony. Them trying to reach 3 billion gamers, it ain't working. Um, what do they have to do in order to compete with Sony? If, with, with, if, you're, if you were Xbox CEO today, what would be some of the, what would be the top three things that you would do to try to help Xbox compete with Sony? Um, I would probably start from scratch, the same thing that they're trying to do now, but not just with one studio, but overall, like, we keep Bethesda where they're at, you know, let yeah. them do their own thing because they already have a good community uh -huh. under there. Yeah. Um, but like with the with the exclusives and everything, I would probably start from scratch yeah. and, you know, and just take my time developing a game that the people want, you know, like mm -hmm. a good story driven game, because I, I think without that, they're not going to gonna compete with sony because all the system sellers are flopping like yeah. Yeah. you know so that's where they're that's where they're that's where they're really liking at and you could tell even as much as xbox tries to preach about multi plat games you know they um they need a they need a reason to keep xbox players on xbox because i own think a lot of people that has Xbox only play on Xbox and probably also play on PC mm. have or they also have a PlayStation. You know, like a lot of like it's not a lot of people, but I know 
a good amount of people that doesn't just have an Xbox. They have an Xbox and PlayStation. They have an Xbox and their PC. Where when it were whereas for Sony people that's a PlayStation, yeah. most a lot of people that's a PlayStation, they don't have an Xbox. Yeah. You know, like they most of them will probably have a PC if they're streaming mm -hmm. or if they're getting in a content creation. You know, mm -hmm. so if they want to sort of Xbox want to gain more loyal fans, they need to they need to create a good exclusive game. You know, that has a good story that they can use to. To sell games and then let on down the road, you know, turn it into some type of show or something, you know, like, I'm sorry, The Last of Us is just a good example for everything. Like, The Last of Us is probably, I wouldn't say Sony's best game because I think God of War, I mean, I don't know. I'm not even going to start that debate, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I would think, we think. It need a, they need to take that type of approach, you know, to where they have a loyal fan base that plays a game. They come out with a couple versions, like a one, a part one and a part two, just to finish the story. And then, you know, later on, get get it to, get it to go in cinema. You feel me? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean. But they'll need to do that. I. Like we're looking at Forza right now. I, yeah. I think Xbox just needs to start having pride in the stuff that they put out. And they got to be willing to compete. And they can't just sit there and say, well, I can't. You know, it's like if we were all going out at recess and then me and you were playing basketball. You know, the, the gym um, assignment was we all have to play basketball. And you keep beating. Mm -hmm. um, instead of me trying to get better and sharpen my skills and say oh forget that I'm well I'm gonna play kickball now and it's like well hold on no 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 kickball's in here the focus has to be you and smart playing basketball you just gotta, gotta learn how to play basketball and get better and I don't think Xbox understands that you got all these customers that followed you because of your whole AAA your former AAA pedigree and you keep promising right. them that you are trying to compete with Sony and you are trying to bring the big games and you're not. And the quality of them, I mean, you're, you're attempting, you're putting stuff out there, but the, the quality of it isn't good. Um, yeah, if, I, if I'm the CEO of Xbox, I'm going to every single department and you have to, every single developer, Really, I don't think it's the developer's problem. The developers were fine before they were bought. I'm I think it was a management, right? You said it was the a management's management. problem. Yeah, I'm going to the management, and I'm asking them, why should you be here? Tell me what, what the failures that... I mean, I get that that guy that I took his place, he was responsible for allowing the failures to happen. But just because he was at the head, at the helm, doesn't mean that you couldn't better manage this. Why, why should I keep you? If you were under him, what what I mean, what is it? What is it that you saw wrong? Did you see anything wrong with what he was doing? If so, tell me now. If not, then you gotta explain to me why you should stay. I would hold everybody in management accountable. Right. And once they satisfy my questions, then I would move from there. And then I would, I would say, go ahead. I would. What I would do is management and advisors. I was till I would look at the whoever their his advisors are too. I would look at those two groups of people and I would tell them we need more pride. Like you said, they need more pride in their games. As much pride as they have in Forza, we need that across the board with every game, with every exactly. game that's being developed. Because exactly. ain't no way, ain't no way Forza Motorsport should have, they should have more pride for the yeah. Forza Motorsport <laughs> than Halo. You know, like those are, those are supposed to be the, the big two, <laughs> big two games. I'm not saying Forza is a good game. I played yeah, yeah, one of the older yeah. Forzas and I loved it. And at the time, I used to be like, when I was, because I, I had an Xbox. Uh -huh. At one point in my life, I had an Xbox. But the, 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 the whole thing is with the, the Xbox that I had, it kept overheating. Yeah. Like, all right. It, I got two. I got the first Xbox. I like to play my games a lot. You feel me? Like when, mm -hmm. I, when I was gaming, when I was younger, I played my games a lot. So Xbox just couldn't keep up. It kept overheating. 
And then when I got the second one, and that one over here, I'm like, all right, I'm going, I'm going back to Sony. Forget this. You feel me? Like, and then my PlayStation Three never, never overheated like the uh, the Xbox did. That was out around that time. Mm -hmm. So, um, the Forza game was good. It was a good game. Just that the console was wasn't it, it had an overheating issue. Yeah. You know. Um, no, but right. yeah, Forza is a good game, but they, they they need more pride, like you said. They need more pride in their games. You feel exactly. me? Because ain't no way they ain't no way ain't no way they're scrapping Halo Infinite. Yeah. You know, but still keeping up with Forza. Exactly. Like that's crazy. That's crazy to me. I think the Forza team just happens to be such a good team that they don't need management. They can put out a quality product, and so that's why Xbox. They, 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 they got lucky there. But anything yeah. that needs oversight, that needs leadership to, to really like comb over what's being done, Xbox is not good at that. And that's why they're, they're having problems with these other. The 343, definitely. Um, they, they needed that oversight from not only from Bonnie Ross or whoever was in charge, but they needed that oversight from Phil. Like, Phil should be able to look at an, uh, a Halo game and say this 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 is bad put go back to the drawing board you know what i'm saying right just like because Yosh yoshida did it when koi barog first brought out what was going to originally be the god of war reboot yoshida who was in charge at the time said no this isn't it this isn't gonna work this is this is what's wrong these are the things that's wrong you need to go back and fix them and he went back and fixed them and the rest is history yeah, you know we need you need leadership like that, but that's where you go to the people that are under you because you're because even though you're the CEO, you drop the, the the gambit when you have to, but you shouldn't have to do everything. That's what the people that are under you are for. So that's why I'm going to them and I'm like, what is it that you guys are doing? You know what I mean? Um, why should you be here when that other guy was here? Did you see anything that he was doing wrong? Or did you think everything... Do, would you like for me to continue what he was doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And anybody that's boneheaded enough to say, yeah, then, you know, that's those are the names that get scratched off the list. You know what I mean? Oh, High Fi is Bethesda. Yeah, High Fi is uh, uh, one of the Bethesda studios, the Bethesda studio that did... Um, what do you call that damn... Uh, Man, no wonder Even people are hyped it. about it. It's freaking Bethesda. They don't. They Bethesda uh, release good games. <laughs> Bethesda release good games. That's why people are hyped about it. Well, it's a, it's a, it's from the Evil Within developer. And yeah. Evil Within was good. Evil Within one and two is good. <coughs> well, now it's all making sense. Now it's all making sense. Evil Within. Two and one and two are, are definitely good games. Um, and no, I think and I'm, again, I'm not saying it's not a solid game, but it's not a mm -hmm. it's 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 not a system seller. It's not right. You know what I mean? Like somebody's school, gonna go buy an Xbox for this game. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go buy an Xbox for this game, or, or I'm or I'm st or I'm sticking with Game Pass because of games like this. No, you you're finding people that are gonna play this game. And then they canceled their subscription. And, and, and instead of paying the $30 retail for it, they, they accessed it for a dollar. That's silly to me. There's nothing to celebrate. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 Cold Blood Sensei says, no, Bethesda's track record in the last decade was mediocre at best. I wouldn't say the last I don't know decade. about that. I would say the last five years. You know, opposite of um, opposite of the 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 mainline Wolfenstein, like even with the Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls though they have they have oh, a loyal yeah. fan base. Yeah, ESO, um, ESO was not bad. I told people that ESO was going to grow and be big. Um, I didn't think Fallout seventy, I, Fallout seventy six was disappointing in some ways, but it, I don't think it was trash. Um, it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be, but that you could consider that mediocre. I think that's fair. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I like Wolfenstein Youngblood. I thought that, I thought it was cool, but people didn't like it. 
whatever. You know, they haven't had to rap. But to be honest with you, Bethesda in the, like the last five years, they haven't put out anything like oh phenomenal. I think the last game mm-hmm. that they put out like that was the latest mainline Wolfenstein game. Um, I thought Rage Two was good, but it, it didn't get uh, it didn't get the, the credit it deserved. But I mean, you know, yeah, I think I, th- I think it's fair to say that Bethesda is reliable to put out good games. Um, yeah. But can they be managed to put out those great games once again? Under Phil Spencer, I don't know, man. I don't know. Another like another um. Like another Skyrim. Like, yeah, I was about to say another Skyrim. Yeah, you know what I mean. A big open world game. Big open. That's what Starfield is supposed to be. So that's why Starfield has every uh, Ron is, Slusher, is Starfield Bethesda too? Yeah, Starfield is Bethesda too. Starfield mm. is uh, everything is riding on Starfield. Ron Slusher says, and that is correct. Starfield has to be big because if Starfield doesn't come out big after they delayed it twice, um, if Starfield doesn't come out big, then. Xbox is gonna, they're gonna be in a, in a real bad spot. I, I, I will say Xbox will be in its most dangerous spot since Satya Nadella first took over, and there were talks that they were gonna sell the business off. So, um, interesting. Right. That's yeah, very interesting stuff. Uh, but that was the developers' conference. I, I nothing. I mean, you know, again, nothing really mind shattering. Again, this game, uh, people like it. I won't take anything from it. But mm-hmm. it, but there's so many other questions that, that need answered. Um, next up, the I best was, showing is Forza. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. the best showing. Always, and that, and that yeah, and that has to change. Um, so we got uh, we got this story about PlayStation Five, uh, PlayStation VR two. And there was a rumor. Um, that PlayStation VR 2 sales expectations reportedly halved after disappointing pre-orders. However, um, there should be an update to this. Uh, update from a report that claims that Sony claims that it, it hasn't cut production of PlayStation VR 2. So the original story was that Sony cut PlayStation VR 2 by half, but then when you read the story, it's not even s- projected by half, by 600. It was 2.1 million they originally projected, then there was a rumor that they cut that by 600,000. That's not half. Mm-hmm. But right. Sony is now coming out and saying that the story is false altogether. That's crazy. What's up with these? What's up with these reporters, man? They want Sony to look bad. They want Sony to take an L so bad. Yes, they somewhere do. they're just fiending for it. They're fiending for it, and it's not going to happen. Looking, they're looking at Force Spoken. They're looking at PSVR. They're trying to find a, a for Sony to take an L somewhere. I don't even think they're freaking the the display that that, that Sony put out. Um, that when they're partnering with that thing, they make it like a Sony specific display. All and everything that did that bad. That that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I totally agree. Let me see here. Let me see if I can find a story. Game industry dot biz PSVR2. We have not cut okay, here it goes. What? Uh oh. This is forbidden. Oh, now they now they've gotten rid of the story. Hold on. That Sony probably um probably told her like, listen. <laughs> oh, the whole story. You know, whole sto- oh, y'all need need to chill. Hold on. See, yes. man, I was. This is crazy. Too expensive. I'll wait for a used one. Now. How much is it? How much is a PSVR? Uh, it's the, like five fifty, I think it is. Okay, yeah, that is a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. It is a lot. I wasn't going to get it because I, I was never that type of person to get in a VR. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, if I was to get VR, it would only be for Gran Turismo. Mm-hmm. But that's a big investment. 
for, yeah, for you know, for some, because I don't have a will. So it's like, if, if I had a will, yeah, I, I would definitely get it. But I don't have a will. It's like buying two PlayStation 5s. <laughs> so. Pretty much. I paid six fifty for mine because it was a bundle. I couldn't oh, find. I bought the, I bought the last copy. I bought the last PlayStation Five that was at um, at a GameStop that I went to. And it was a God of War bundle. It says the following recent Bloomberg report states that Sony told supplier partners to prepare for a reduction in, in display panel orders. Uh, it says, but uh, Sony has refuted the claim in a new statement to GameIndustry.biz. Um, and it says, we have not cut PSVR 2 production. The platform refutes Bloomberg report. It says, PlayStation says, it has not cut v PlayStation VR 2 numbers following a report from Bloomberg. The, f the firm told GameIndustry.biz that it's seeing enthusiasm from PlayStation fans for the upcoming launch, which includes more than 30 titles such as Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Call of the Mountain, and Resident Evil Village. Uh, the initial... Ooh. The initial report said that Sony was making a significant reduction in the projections for PSVR 2 and even warned suppliers uh, that manufacturing could decrease as well. The outlet stated that Sony had halved its original forecast. Uh, PlayStation in, in VR 2 is due February 22nd and it's priced at 550 with 37 titles set for release during its launch window. Um, yeah, count out my price range right now for something for something like VR. <laughs> um, yeah. But dear it, but um, uh, Insomniac. Before PlayStation bought them, they mm -hmm. were working on this game called Homeland, or I think it was Homeworld, something like that. And it was a VR game, and it was the dopest VR game. They 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 showed it at E3, I think 2020. The last E3. That was like E3 2020, I think they showed it at. The dopest uh, VR game that I've ever saw. <coughs> and when Sony bought them, that's the first thing I thought. I said, I can't wait to see that Homeland game on Sony VR. And it probably was too state-of-the-art for PSVR 1. You'll probably see it on PSVR 2. I think right. that is going to be a system changer. It's going to be a game changer like Half-Life Lynx was mm -hmm. and got a lot of people in the VR that might do it but uh yeah I mean is there any game out there smock that like grabs your interest that you would want to play VR that will make you buy a VR headset um no <laughs> no 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 Gran Turismo Gran Turismo and oh, then okay. I seen Gran Turismo 7 and Resident Evil oh okay 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 yeah, yeah that's cool yeah, because yeah, Gran Turismo cool. Seven already looks in, uh, Gran Turismo Seven already looks in, in, insane, and uh, PSVR Two that might make it like um, look crazy, yeah. and because it might make it look like you're actually there. Like, like imagine. See, I'm a, I'm a big racing guy, so I'm trying to picture myself. So basically, the image that I'm getting, imagine. You actually, this is the closest you're gonna to get to real life race car driving. Yeah, it's true. it's through this game. True. So in VR, so play them to to play that in VR is insane. I'm not even gonna lie. And even um, yeah, I was about to say even Club Sensei agreed. You know, he might play Grand Chisholm thanks to to VR too. Yeah. Because I think that's gonna look insane. Yeah. That would probably be a crazy. Crazy experience to, mm -hmm. um, to do the yeah, particularly the racing. I'm with you there. Yeah, the racing would be cool. Um, all right, no, that's cool. I'm you know if it, I don't know if if I mean if I win one, you know, or if somebody if you win to, one, somebody <laughs> wants to give me one, I'm, like, I'm not gonna be mad. But um, here here goes a final story here. Uh, you know what I could do? What's that? You know what I could do? I, I could probably use my taxes to get a <laughs> PSVR 2. I could probably yeah. use my taxes. Yeah. I want that Homeland. Like, I I think the other experiences would be cool, but for me to drop 549 on it, it has to be something that I know that I would play all the time and not just one experience. And when I saw it, it was at home. I think it's called Homeland. 
I'm gonna let me, let oh me type God. in right now. And, so, and Sean so, said, Sean said he wants a battlefield in VR. You know how insane that would be oh, to have so, been to actually feel like you're a soldier, like out there and seeing bombs fly over you. Like, see, I'm trying to, I'm trying to picture like the full immersive experience where you're like actually there and you actually get to see bombs and planes flying and stuff like that. That would be insane. Yep. Would be that would be insane. Oh, but Let's yeah. Type of VR game. Insomniac VR game. Uh, Stormland. Oh, it's already out. I didn't even know that. So Stormland is just called Stormland, and it's already out. Now I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put this up here. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me um, Stormland VR. Yeah, this is it. Oh, and it's on the Oculus. Oh, okay. Jesus. That just shows you how much I'm paying attention. Okay, so let me uh, let me put this on the screen. So here it goes right here. It's called Stormland and it's made by Insomniac. And this is what they showed at E3. Um, and it's part, and, and it's on the, uh, it's, uh, you can get it on the Oculus or you can get it on the, the, the Meta. And I'm not, I, I don't really know the differences between the two. I, I know one is with Facebook and the other one is with, uh, but when I saw this demo. This is the Oculus HTC, I think. Probably, yeah. I miss that company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, come on. Show some of that damn gameplay. Just the traversing in the gameplay. And it just and it felt like it, 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 it to me it had the best um motion for an actual uh like first person RPG. I mean, a first-person mm -hmm. shooter action game. Yeah. It serves like robots. Yeah. I could, I could really get into something like that. I didn't mm. realize that this was, this was out. I thought, I thought it got canceled. Mm. But um, yeah, if if they bring this to PlayStation VR, I'm, I'm all on it. You know what I mean? Might be. It said 37 titles. It could be one of them. It could be one of them. All right. So we're going to close out with this. Uh, for our PC people, you know we don't forget about you. Uh, whatever. Uh, Atomic Heart, which is supposed to be coming to Xbox Game Pass. But if you don't, if you want all the bells and whistles, and, and for instance, if, you, if you're like me, um, if you have access to GFN Ultimate, Smog, I don't know. Do you have access to GFN Ultimate? Um, no, I don't have GFN. Okay. After I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna switch platforms. After Stadia's gone, I was, I told myself I was yeah. done it's with cloud right. gaming. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people. Yeah, but the, the, I think the only thing I'm missing that I, that I see that mm -hmm. I do miss with Stadia is no downloads because mm -hmm. even though downloads don't take a long time. I'm not gonna diss my, my my console as if it does. <laughs> it doesn't take a long time, you feel me? Uh -huh. But um, it's the space. Yeah. It's the space, bro. Because yeah. now I'm now I'm already thinking because if I want to keep playing the games that I want to play, I got to I gotta buy external hard drive. I got to, and yeah. I gotta get at least one that's at least ten terabytes exactly. because I'm not about to I'm not about to keep um, buying stuff. You feel me? So I just want to yeah. get one. I think my brother said that he found one that's not too expensive. That's like probably 150 or something like that, 160. That's 10 terabytes of storage. I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to get that. Oh, wow. oh okay. But that's the only bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you were thinking about getting GFN, and I, and the only reason, and, and re, well, I won't say the only reason. I like GFN because they give you access to like this 4080 tier, and I wish it before. We went live. The reason why I was running late is because my PC had messed up. Remember, I tell you, just keep shutting off. Yeah. What happened yeah. was um, I was playing Cyberpunk on the new GFN tier, and it gives mm -hmm. you access to a 4080. So I was able to put everything in uh, Psycho on mm -hmm. Cyberpunk. 
mm-hmm. and, play, and I played it at 4K, 120 frames per second. Mm-hmm. It was mind blowing all through GeForce Now. You said 40, 80, or 30, 80? 40, 80. They, 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 they currently have the 30, 80 available for everybody, but if you log on to certain servers, you can get access to the new 40, 80 service, which mm. gives you like the, this NVIDIA reflex thing that reduces latency even further, and then you get enhanced yeah. graphic capabilities. So you can put everything mm. in its highest thing, its highest settings and get 4k 120 it's bro it's sick i've never seen mm-hmm. as a pc gamer i have a 3070 in my computer i've never seen still i've never seen games look this good oh and this is over right. the cloud. so um atomic heart is one of the games that i've been eyeballing i'm like yeah i, I want to play this game with all the bells and whistles um i know it's going to be in game pass but screw that i don't care about it being there cheap i'm gonna get it on pc and i'm gonna play it on gfn and if you're a PC gamer, whether you're going to play it on GFN or not, if you want to get this game real cheap, you can get the standard edition. That's normally going to run $60. You can get it for $50. Um, or you can get the premium, which would normally run $100. That's only going to run $82 if you go to Fanatical. You got to get it while it's in pre-order, and you can get that discount. So just want to let gamers know that in case you wanted to buy the game. So. Nice. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. That concludes our show. Let me see. Let me take a look at what the chat is saying. Um, Sean says, I'm probably going to try tonight. Try it tonight. Uh, he says, uh, Coldblood Sensei. Oh, dang. They won't, let, they won't let me play your comments, Coldblood. What's going on? What you, what you got? <laughs> they say, he was it, talking too crazy. And I'm just playing. Exactly. The <laughs> said Microsoft's take on VR is trash. Yeah, they did. They, they, won't, they wouldn't pay for it. Um, I would want a BFVR, says Sean. I would want a BFVR, yeah. I, I would, uh, that, that would probably be dope. Um, and Cold Blood says, dang, bro. Why is it the <laughs> moderation check? What is wrong? Hold on. I think it's because, um, I think it's probably because he, I don't know. Cold Blood, right? I got. I gotta check the setting. I don't know what the hell is going on. We just need to turn the. I think you just need to. I think yeah, it's something that you have to do, so you could um probably turn off the, like the age restriction, so it was so it doesn't censor the the comments and all that stuff. Error. I keep saying error every time I try to pull up. This. Yeah, I don't have to look that up. Let me go dashboard. Okay, I switched something, so maybe it'll let me play his comments now. Okay, let me play that one. Cause we can dream. There we go. All right. Yeah, it was it was weird. Why why did they keep censoring them? Yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 it for today's show. Hey, Smart, can you let the good people know where they can find you at, good brother? Yep. You can find me over at YouTube at Smart Junior. Um, you can find me on Twitter and two O L A. And find me. I, I don't really be on Twitch like that. I'm sorry. I Twitch does a lot of stuff I don't really agree with personally, but that's that's just my personal take. So just find me over at YouTube. Um, if you guys have it, um, I play a lot of Need for Speed over there. I upload Need for Speed. I'm playing for Spoken, and I'm playing a lot of Gran Turismo on the channel. So if you guys like that type of stuff, if you're a big racing fan like I like I am. Come you can come over to my channel and you can see the videos that I upload. And the videos on from PlayStation to YouTube is actually good quality. They upload their stuff in HDR. Yeah. Which a lot of which I don't see on, on a lot of other people's channels. Exactly. So, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Um speaking of that, which I'm glad Daryl Smock brought that up because I meant to mention it earlier. If you don't if you if you're having issues watching the show on Twitch, which I know a lot of people are like, oh, I can't stand the commercials, all that other stuff. We rebroadcast this on YouTube. So you're going to want to follow me over at, um, at MM2K Gaming on YouTube and be on the lookout for when, you know, these finally go over and they premiere over there. Like last week's episode, it, for some reason it took a week, last week's episode was finally finished and we aired it, I think earlier today. Um, yeah, we, no, 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 we aired it last night. 
Um, so definitely um, follow me at MM2K Gaming over on YouTube so you can watch it over there. Um, hopefully this week's episode will hear. It, it all depends on when Twitch releases it over to YouTube. There's a function where you I can I have a actually, quick question. Uh-huh. Does Sony own Square Enix? No. Or, be, or no? So how is it that like isn't wasn't Final Fantasy 7 originally like a PlayStation exclusive? It Long was time back in or yeah. It was back in the day. Okay. Yeah. yeah See, well, Sony what I Sony what Sony does is they put little droplets like they like they test the waters to see how it's gonna do because they did this with Bungie when the first Destiny game came out for like the first three years I think Sony had a lot of exclusive stuff with Bungie and now you too they bought Bungie even though they're keeping a the game multiplayer they talk uh, they 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 you know it could be the same thing with Square Enix. You know, because they have a they they square it is still gives Sony a, a lot of exclusive games. Yeah. Well so Sony has a um not they they're not own they don't own Square Enix, but they have like a my minority stake in the company. So they, I think they own like five percent of Square Enix or something like that. So they make a lot of investments and they do a lot of partnerships with them, and that's why a lot of people surmise at some point in time that Sony might just end up buying Square Enix, you know what I mean? So Stadia is already dead, bro. They could. I wish they. I wish they would about Stadia. That would be cool. <laughs> said, that would be uh, cool, but they're dead already. We talk about the fieldness interview. Well, it's not just about but yeah, no. Oh yeah, and, and and another thing, I'm glad that you guys. I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Ron. Um, stay tuned to Cloud Dosage. I got some inside information about the Stadia. You know, because we, we were talking about how we had heard that Stadius Tech might be bought up by, you know, groups out there like PlayStation or something like that. Well, I got some definitive news about that, and you're going to mm. want to hear it from me. So stay tuned to Cloud Dosage News. Make sure you know you what? <laughs> that would be so crazy if Sony buys some of Stadius Tech, mm. and then that would be the answer to X Cloud. That would be crazy. That would, my mind would, that would blow my mind if that actually happened. Well, that would blow my mind. I'm going to tell, 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 tell you what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got I, from a very trusted source. I found out the lowdown. So I'm going to release it to the members first because y'all y'all show the extra love and support. And then eventually I'll talk to the public about it. But stay tuned to, to Cloud Dosage News um, for, that, for that piece of information. So with that said... Yeah, let me get off air. Let me let me let me tell uh, Dill Spock what's going on <laughs> with that. Um, <laughs> and, and until next time, y'all, y'all have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.